I need to fill that bucket up with water from way down there in the corner of the house so that I can have it come out and drip water my garden. So I had a bunch of parts already with the water collection system here. I'm redoing everything. Got a new roof, got new gutters. So we're going to rebuild that. In Texas, equipment for water collection is tax free. I've taken the gutter down. I need to take the rope out that stops the noise. And since I've rebuilt this thing numerous times, decided the best thing to do is start forming it on the wall. Instead of building it on the ground and putting it all up at once, it's too hard to get right. So I'm going to put the collector here and then we'll collect the dirt and the first flush diverter and the water will come over and run down, come over here and then we'll have an overflow coming. I am going to make the water come down, come over to the wall and down to get more three inch line. So when it turns into can't remember it's one and a half or two inch line it'll have more of a head at it and it'll head on the, and pressure on that pipe and it'll push that water up to the top up there I'm probably going to be about four feet taller the ground's going up that way but where it's going to come down on the ground and run back here to the water collection pipe water collection tank I'm going to be at least four feet taller where the water comes out here, where it starts collecting. So plenty of head to get the water pushed. This is the basic mechanism up by the gutter to trap the water. The gutter pours into here and there's a little thing that makes the leaves, the leaves fall off for the most part. And then there's a connection at the bottom of this to collect debris. And when that fills up, the water then overflows back into here. And it'll come down here and run to the tank. And if it, gets, if it goes too fast, then the water's going to come over here and come back down on the ground and flow out. I have a couple holes drilled. One's in the stone, and one's part stone, part mortar. It's not flat across here. Otherwise, I have to move it way down here and move it way down and bring down an extension. I don't want to mess with that. I want to leave the water entry into the system as high as possible. So we're going to mount this. By the way, I said I'm going to mount it, build it as I go, and then I'm going to take it down and prime it correctly and then paint it correctly. Try to keep the PVC from showing so much of its uh, white texture. In, that's pretty tight. It's going to have to hold the water in this rain first flush diverter and then down going down. So but I'm, I'm going to have it attached to the wall in certain places so not all the pressure is going to be on here. I'm also going to have to attach this to the wall. I don't want it moving when it rains hard. I don't want it vibrating so I'm going to put a strap around this. Okay, here's the first flush diverter. It's going to go something like this. This fits on the inside. I have to glue that and clock it. PVC glue. And then from here, I have to get to something I can have a knob to let the water drip out because over time, this will, this will fill up with water in the first rain, but it fills up with sediment. I have to drain the sediment out. So these are the parts I have. I'm going to try to go to the store, see if there's something simpler. I have a, by the way, it's all three inch PVC. I have a coupler. I get this little Charlotte. One and a half inch by three inch adapter to glue over here. And then I have this little adapter that I can open or leave loose. And if I leave it loose, the water will drip out over time. So I don't have to keep messing with it. Except every half a year or so, empty the sediment. And that would glue on here like that. So I would use PVC cement and a bunch of uh, caulk to make sure it's sealed. This is the first flush collector, diverter. This is where the water will come out, and this is the overflow if it can't get out the tank fast enough. You gotta, this is what I used the last time, so it's a little piece of this 3 inch PVC in its elbow. And it'll get glued and mounted in here, and caulked, and then it comes down here, 
and I can have a, I believe this is one and a half inch. The check there might be two, and I come out as far as I want to have it run into the local rocks over here. Or I could go into the ground and have it come up and puff up somewhere. Hopefully this is rarely used, but sometimes we get those three to six inch rains per year around here, it comes out fast. Now, this water is going to come down. This is the main flow. I'm going to make sure all these little holes are sealed from the last repair. It will come down here. And then the idea is, I'm going to get along the piece here, come over close to the corner, come down, and it's not going to have a 45, this is old piece. It's going to come down to about here. And then this guy, this piece will come up over here at a little bit of an angle. And it has to be at the, at the angle for it to flow downhill all the way over to here where it's going to connect with the main pipe to go through the rest of the yard. So it really only has to drop an inch or two the whole way to keep it flowing because the rainwater is going to push down on it and push the water out. The gravity will do the job. So I just need a little bit of downhill. I have to think how I'm going to move these rocks so we can still get over to here. But you know, have this. I want the, the least amount of this above ground as possible. This is Charlotte pipe, three inch. It's all PVC. I made the mistake a couple generations ago. You know, I used this kind of tubing. It was cheaper, but it's not quote unquote PVC. It's got this black rubber lining. What's the problem? It collapses. And so it was really hard to get a good glue. I had to screw it and put caulk on there. So I'm replacing all of this tubing. This is good for just plain old gutter runoff or something, but it's not good for the water collection system. There's no way to seal it. put rocks in the corner of our foundation. See the armadillos or possums. I'm always trying to dig down there, get it something cool. Okay, I found an old piece in the pile. This is threaded, so this one is gonna be a little longer, but I can just, that way it's a lot larger for the opening of the sediment. But I usually just leave that a bit loose and that will fit on here. Again, just for drip drip out over time okay all right oh okay I think what I'm going to do here I also forgot in the corner there's an irrigation pipe for the beds I could cap that off but I don't want to cram everything in there and not be able to get to it so I'm gonna have this guy come down with two 45s and then come up over here with a 90 degree across. And then I have one or two feet, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 30 feet of three inch head pressure to pour in the two inch pipe. If you know about Bernoulli's principle, that's gonna make that water go fast. the fence with the water tank down there and I was just looking through it even though I painted it I can still see sunlight so this didn't stay clogged with debris so the first flush diverter worked really well it's kind of bent in the shape over the years I'm gonna turn it over and paint it some more
I'm a bit frugal, so I just patch this together to uh, smaller pieces. I might put a whole piece here so I don't see this scene, but it's not that nice of a system. And I was also thinking there's something nice about keeping this in the corner. It adds some sideways support. So I may be able to go right next to that thing and just cap that off and use one of my other heads. We got this piece all glued together, double 45s. Gives us a little more gradual run off of the wall so I'm not completely up against the wall and I can't get to my irrigation pipe. So we're gonna do this one in here. And then we have this long pipe here. Come up here to the bottom. And then Set this off some. Try to minimize how much we have to dig here. And then on the end down here, we have some extra pieces for coupling. And then, just because of the size of the pipe, that'll match up with this pipe here. This size. We may do a sand bend or put some 45s in because this, this pipe has to curve all the way to the backyard and then down to the right to the tank. So we could probably do it 45s. We have one right here that might have been used for it coming off of here. Okay. the feel of that glue going on. Slips on there so easily it's satisfying. Okay. Last piece is gonna be here. So I just have to determine. Which direction we want to go over here. Down like this. Let's push this guy. Yeah, we're going to have to dig some more of that grass out. Okay, let's get this popcorn in. I don't want to get any on it. I got the muscle now to help us retrench this pipe hole. We're only going to go right below the surface.
Okay, I'm gonna have a little bit of a drop, just a little bit, and I'm gonna drill a hole. I'm gonna put some of this, whatever this stuff is called, some kind of band thing to hold this up. A little insert. The thing is, this scratches the PVC when I paint it, so I may have to think of a different kind of material. But let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I can cut that off. Here, I'll turn that off. It's got a little bit of a slope to it. Push that back in. Once we get this too very, it'll hold itself against the wall. Okay, remember, we're taking all this down to paint it. Okay, we got quite a bit dug out. You can see in the bottom of the foundation, we're going to put in about four or five inches of mulch, and that pipe will be painted probably a black so all the way up into that big rock right there it's mostly going to be submerged so when we get to the grass line we have to come down and it's just sitting there and you notice it still has a nice gentle slope so at the low point in the whole water collection system is going to be here and I am going to reduce it down to run to the tank but I also have a little relief valve so the water can drain slowly over time when it's full that's what the old one looked like i had a little hose come off and i could fill up a galvanized bucket with water that was remaining in the line it's not going to backflow from the tank and so i think my low point was right here by this big rock um, version three used to be out here and that's where i wanted again i wanted to come way out and so I can make it go in the yard or just come to flow down on the grass when I want to empty it. And I learned in February 2021 I need to empty this thing because a couple pieces cracked. There was water in them and they froze. I should have drained it all. But in any case, I had to re-engineer it anyway. Okay, I got some tweaks because I can see the first flush diverter. It's a little crooked. I need to push it over that way. And that matters. Okay come along nicely. What we're going to do is we're going to assemble without the relief drain. We're going to assemble everything without glue in this smaller diameter pipe. We're going to run all the way out to the backyard over here and then all the way down and just get ready for a trial run because it's supposed to start raining tomorrow. So this smaller pipe stays together pretty well. It's got a flange on the end. It doesn't come apart easily. And so I don't care if it drips a little bit. I just want to make sure the water will still flow. Well, here's what we finally decided upon after looking at three or four different approaches and trying to reuse pipes. Get the three inch. We've got a connector sleeve going on here. And I got this big coupling thing. Reduce it. Another reducer. And finally, this pipe I'm using is actually one and a quarter goes in there and then there's a T here and that's a threaded T and I come out here with a little hose connection I can connect that hose back to it so that will be can come up out of the ground with a, a little valve on the end of it so I can turn the water on and off coming out of the ground when I want to drain it so that'll be a low pipe a low pipe no pipe the low place in the pipe rather Connects over, and there we go. I'll, I'll fast forward all this.
wrong side. Is this going on the inside or outside? Oh, it's going on the inside. Messed up. That's going on the inside. Okay, this is all assembled. You can see we have to keep digging a little bit up here. We have it gradually come out of the ground that way. You get a lot of pipe. Yeah, about about 80 foot of pipe filling up that way, and another 80. Actually, about 120 going down that way. Okay, last thing we're going to do is connect pipes down to the tank, and then we'll call it a day. So this is where we're going to collect the water. Comes off the roof way over here, runs along the ground, comes down. So that place on the roof was high enough to get the water to come up and into the top of this gallon tank. This, I'm sorry, 900 gallon tank, whatever it is. 600, 900. 550 gallon tank. There you go. So we're even lower now here, so this water should have no problem running up and running down because we're probably here five feet shorter than where it's coming in over here it comes up and it will be connected to here the water flows in and then if it overflows it comes out here this overflow has to be turned down I'll do that in a second but then when we use the water it comes out of this hose on the bottom so somewhere along the, along the line I made a mistake this used to not be glued together, but we had a, one storm that came apart and I glued it, but I shouldn't really have done it like that. 
because this is too high to collect overflow. It should be about here and then over. So I may have to cut this or I'm going to have to do something to make the overflow become lower. Yeah, so we'll figure that out later. That's a rare occasion that it overflows. The worst case is it just bubbles out of this. But that is still higher than this, so we'll see. Maybe the bottom of this will take the overflow. I guess that's still lower than the peak. But what would happen when I did have overflow, I had two more valves on here so I could connect those to garden hoses and just redirect the overflow work, overflow water. And, or I could use the bottom of that to come into a second tank. But in any case, we're closed off here on the output in this hose. And we're secure enough for the water to flow and test it to collect water if we get a good rain this weekend. Okay? All right. That's part one of water collection. Part two is test it. And then part three is take it apart, prime it, paint it, and glue all the vital pieces where they need to be glued. You know, which is everything. If I need to take anything apart, I'll just cut the PVC. I got a really nice cutter here that it's a it's a ratchet cutter. It cuts I think up to two inches, and these are all one and a quarter. And so um yeah, and I'm, this has been sitting since the freeze 2021 February. So I'm gonna pour a little bleach in here. There's still a little standing water, you can't see it. I'm gonna pour some bleach to kill anything that's in there. I don't drink this water. I just use it to water the garden or to fill buckets whenever we need to. Here's all the extra pieces we took down. We're no longer using the black pipe. That long one and that short one. I had it wrapped for decoration. That's stupid. And these are downspouts from gutters. That's going to be another project, which is gutters hanging on the fence for herb gardens. Okay, and that garden loves this, the... Uh, the nitrogen lace rainwater. We got that rain on Sunday. You can see how much water comes out. Got that one, how much comes out of here. And I have a design defect in my new version. Immediately, you see the water's overflowing to the bottom. And I got a few holes attached. Water's coming in pretty well, but it's coming down here going over but it's there's a slow spot here so it's immediately overflowing so the water's backing up to here and coming down so I think I'm gonna have to drop this connection way down another three feet try to get it for a while there it's, it's full now but this this white pump this white pipe was pulsing the water was flowing through it. So I don't want to lose that much water. But you can see it. Before it comes down and collects really well. These are six inch gutters back here. I don't mind it spraying off a little bit. But that little leak is just a hole I have to plug from the last build. But I'm going to have to make this come down. Either either bring it straight back down again and over, or at least allow it to build up some water because it's, I guess that's about eight inches. It's already overflowing, so it can't get through those turns fast enough. But I may go get the umbrella to see if it's going into the pipe out, the tank outside. That's a lot of lost water. I don't hear any thunder, so I'm going to run over here. See if the water's making it down. It may have separated because of the force of the water. I haven't glued it at all. Let's see if it's coming down. Oh yeah! Victory! Pour it in there. Thank you, gravity. By the way, I also put a piece of cloth underneath this when I put it in. 
That's an air breather, but keep the, the mosquitoes from going in. Okay, it is working. I'm gonna re-engineer that overflow. Oh, that's good, and it's it's coming that force, even with the, the overflow draining too much water out up there. Yeah, baby. If I can figure out a way to run these lines off of here, you can see the water coming out. I make another tank. That 600 gallon tank I can fill in less than an hour in one of these Texas downpours. So I thought about getting a thousand gallon tank, but it's too high. The top of it is too high to get the gravity to feed it. So I have to get flatter tanks. Okay, well we can celebrate for a little while. We've got a little re-engineering to do. Got another heavy rain. Haven't made any changes. Less coming out the bottom. Still flowing up top. Everything's stable. Got a little drip going on where it's supposed to. Let's go check the tank. Mosquitoes. We've been out of town. There's another inch and a half of rain. It looks like water came out of the overflow. So if we look in here, this thing should be to the top. There it is. Time to start using it in the garden. Okay, let's pack that bad boy up. I hope to finish the water collection system today. This is my relief drain that came off of the two inch with an adapter, an elbow, an adapter, elbow, and turned it into a hose connection. And then it has to be real low to get it to come out, so I'm going to put probably some hose way down here underground, sticking up about a foot or two so I can fill buckets. So that'll be lo a lower point. And then on this main system, I changed the the horizontal right angle, put in some 45s, hopefully to allow the water to flow better. And I've left the system open, Let's see if you can see it. I left the system open right here. I can pull that apart. And I've left it open down here. And then I'll probably glue this. But that way, if I have to take this unit off the wall, I can. I don't have to go in and start sawing. I made a cut here this morning. I'm going to put some of this corrugated pipe around it just for looks, because some of this will be sticking above the mulch line, and it'll go down into the ground. Plus, it just gives a lo another little level of protection from hammers and people walking on it. So I'm going to string that all the way down here, fill some dirt, put some mulch in here, and then I'll take... Really, I only have to paint from this area up. Got it all reassembled. Looks kind of cool. 
you can see with his camera the black against the brown stone first flush diverter that'll drip out catches all the debris comes around flushes down all the way down here all the way out the backyard and way down there in the tank I've got separation oh and then if it can't keep up flushing it it'll over go into the tank it'll overflow into the ground here and bring it out on the lawn but I can take the unit apart right here I can take the right here this fixture I can take the unit apart right here and I can take it apart right there so that's pretty nice I don't have to have it all put together I get this on here we'll decorate it all with dirt and mulch fill it back in pull out some of these rocks but the mulch will be about halfway up we're going to put rocks here and then another set of rocks here just to keep people from trying to walk on it and we'll probably put we have this curbing and we'll probably bring some rocks out this way overall satisfied here i added a tee and a little nipple with the cap so i can actually drain this long stand that pipe in the winter time There's a nice Texas rain going on. We have a little overflow over the front. There's nothing I can do about that. And very little spilling back right here. So most of it's going down through the system out to the back tank. You can see the volume of one of the other ones. A lot of water. I gotta fix that also. Here's the final product. I had to tighten up the little band here and add a little band to the wall down here. And I added a longer extension. I gotta paint that little white adapter. But I put some big flagstone on either side, fill it with river gravel, river stone. And so the overflow will run right here. But it comes out into the yard, maybe a foot or, foot or so. I'll put a little mound of dirt, keep the mower from hitting it. This will pack down over time, and I'm going to put, I was going to put that over, but I'm going to put a square box over this so I can get to the on-off switch to drain it, bury that. But in any case, that's what it looks like. Nice black mulch around it. Satisfied. Water reclamation finished, finally.